Hi again, everyone. Welcome to week 11. And so what we're doing this week is putting together all of the different kinds of tests that we've learned about in the semester so far um, under um, one particular example, one big example, one particular research study or research context. And so hopefully today's lecture will help you to integrate all of the different bits and pieces that we've learnt up until this week, up until week 11, and put together all the different kinds of tests and hopefully make it a little bit more practically applicable or practically meaningful in terms of understanding when each of these individual tests would be necessary or would be used. So we're talking about today, starting off with a recap of all the different tests that we've learned so far. Then I'll talk a little bit about how you can make that decision about what sort of test you should use under what circumstances. Um, I've talked a bit about this so far throughout the semester. That's how I've scaffolded or introduced each of the different tests each week. But now that we've got to the end of the test and that we've finished all the different tests that we'll learn, um, putting it together, putting them all together using this research framework with the help of something that's called a decision tree, hopefully will help you um, learn to make that decision a little bit more easily in terms of understanding what kind of test you want to use under what circumstances. Then I'll give you an introduction of an actual real life study example. So this is a research project that I was involved in um, that was looking at pain, looking at the psychological aspects of pain. So hopefully to give you one single research project, one single study, but a number of different kinds of hypotheses and a number of different kinds of statistical tests then that we need to use to address the hypotheses. As I said before, hopefully that'll make things a little bit more practically meaningful or significant for you to understand how each of these tests fit together in the context of a psychological research study. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so we've learned a lot of different kinds of tests in this session so far in PSYC 105. We started off with t-tests and three different kinds of t-tests. There was a one sample t-test first and then the independent samples t-test and then the paired samples t-test. We then moved on to correlations and did one particular kind of correlational analysis, which was called the Pearson's correlation. And then last week we finished with chi-square tests and we did two different kinds of chi-square tests, the chi-square goodness of fit test and the chi-square test of independence. So that's six different statistical tests. Um, you probably feel, or maybe you might feel a little bit overwhelmed by how many there are and the different details that pertain to each of the individual tests. So as I've said to you before, one of the biggest, most important things for psychology students to learn or research students or human sciences students to learn is to understand under what circumstances you'd use a paired t-test versus a correlation versus a chi-square test of independence. How do you know which test you need to use when you've got a set of variables or a particular hypothesis? So that's a really big thing and it's a really important thing for you to learn and it's a really easy thing to feel overwhelmed by. But hopefully um, the more that we talk about this, the more you might come to understand that the answer to that question is really based on the specific hypothesis and more generally the research question. So what it actually is that you're interested in investigating, what the effect is that you're trying to investigate or trying to understand. Also the types of variables that are involved in that individual hypothesis. So what kind of variables have you got? Are they categorical variables? Are they numeric variables? But also the distributions of the variables. And then finally, the thing that you need to think about are the different assumptions that apply to each of the individual tests themselves. So for each of these six different statistical tests, there's a whole lot of assumptions that go along with them, three to four assumptions per test. And you need to make sure before you actually run the test that the data are appropriate for that test, i.e. they meet those assumptions for the individual test. So those are some things that you need to um, factor into your decision making process in terms of understanding what kind of test you want to run under what circumstances. To also help you make that decision, um, I'm going to introduce something called, that's called a decision tree. And this decision tree is here to help you make a decision, hence its name decision tree. Um, and it's really going to be used as like a flow chart or a flow diagram to help you identify what the relevant pieces of information are that you need to understand. And then based on the answers to the questions about those pieces of information, what kind of test you need to use. So the first question that I'm going to say is the most important thing for you to start with in terms of understanding which of these six tests applies to any individual circumstance 
the first question is how many variables are there in the hypothesis? So for your research hypothesis, is it talking about one variable or is it talking about two variables? Is one variable identified or are two variables identified? If it's one, then the next question you want to ask is what kind of variables are they? Um, for that individual variable in the hypothesis, is it a categorical variable or is it a numeric variable? If it's a numeric variable, then you can see we can follow down the flowchart here. And if it's a single numeric variable involved in the hypothesis, then the kind of question that the hypothesis is posing is that it wants to compare the mean score of that numeric variable to some other external known mean score. And if that's what you want to do, then the kind of test that you need to do that to answer that particular hypothesis is a one sample t-test. On the other hand, going back up to what kind of variable this single variable is, if it's a categorical variable, then the kind of question the hypothesis might be posing is that it wants to compare the proportions of observations in this categorical variable to some known external other known proportions. So comparing the distribution of this categorical variable to something else, to some other known distribution, in which case it would be a chi-square goodness of fit test that you use to address that particular hypothesis. So one single variable in the hypothesis, depending on whether it's a numeric or a categorical variable, you would use either a one sample t-test or a chi-square goodness of fit test. On the other hand, going back up to the top here, if there are more than one, hypo more than one variable involved in your hypothesis, if there are two variables involved in your hypothesis, then you're gonna do a different kind of test or a bunch of different sorts of tests. So if there are two variables, again, you wanna ask yourself, what kind of variables are they? Are they numeric, are they categorical, or are they a mix of both? If there are two numeric variables in your hypothesis, then what you're going to want to do in that hypothesis, the way the hypothesis could be phrased, would be to test the strength of a linear relationship to determine the strength of either a linear positive or a linear negative relationship. And that's going to be a Pearson's correlation that's going to help you answer that particular hypothesis. On the other hand, if you don't have two numeric variables, but instead you've got one numeric and one categorical variable in your hypothesis, then there are two options available to you. You might want to be comparing the mean score on that numeric variable between two independent groups, two separate groups of people or two separate groups of observations, in which case the kind of test you'd use is the independent samples t-test. If you're also looking to compare the mean score, but you're looking to compare the mean score between two related groups, non-independent groups, then what you're going to be using instead is a paired t-test. So a paired t-test will be to compare the mean score of that numeric variable between two related non-independent groups. And the last option available to you for having two variables in your hypothesis in terms of the kinds of variables is going to be two categorical variables. So if you have two categorical variables in your hypothesis, then what you're going to want to do is to compare the categories of one variable across the categories of another variable. So is the proportion of observations across categories of one variable different to the proportion of observations across the categories of its second variable? In which case the kind of test you would use in that circumstance would be a chi-square test of independence. So hopefully using this decision tree, using this flowchart, would help you to understand if you've got any specific hypothesis which of these six tests you need to use to address that hypothesis, to test that hypothesis. And so what we're doing for the rest of the lecture today is to essentially work through this flowchart to identify different kinds of hypotheses and different kinds of tests that are involved in those hypotheses.